I am Mary Lloyd Ireland. I am pleased to present this on shoulder multidirectional instability, which appears as a subsection in the chapter of the female athlete, which is co-authored with Edie Griffin. Dr. Matthew Blake, orthopedic sports medicine at the University of Kentucky, helped in this chapter writing. This is the chapter appearing in the female athlete, Delee and Drez's Orthopedic Sports Medicine, Principles and Practice, 5th edition. The shoulder is an inherently unstable joint, so hence it is the most commonly dislocated joint in the human body. Stability is achieved through an interplay of dynamic stabilizers, the rotator cuff, deltoid muscles, static stabilizers, the labrum, glenohumeral, capsuloligamentous complex in the joint capsule, and scapular normal kinesis. What is the definition of laxity? Laxity is increased normal physiologic motion of the glenohumeral joint, and it's not a pathologic entity. Hence, female athletes oftentimes have laxity, but it does not become instability until it's symptomatic or until they see us healthcare professionals. Definition of instability is traumatic, voluntary, or multidirectional instability. We also talk about the direction of the instability. Is it anterior, posterior, inferior, or is it this multidirectional instability? Some of these are traumatic, some of these atraumatic, as in this multidirectional instability in the female athlete. Multidirectional instability is defined as symptomatic laxity of two or more directions. This is as defined by NEAR. Less than 10% of all patients with shoulder instability have MDI. 50% are female and have no history of trauma. 50% of patients with MDI also have general ligamentous laxity on the Byton scale. Increased laxity is not directly correlated with multidirectional instability. There are multiple causes. Some of these are debatable. Multifactorial reasons for multidirectional instability. Hormonal influences, microtrauma, capsuloligamentous complex, muscular imbalance, proprioceptive deficits, and scapular dyskinesis can all weave together to create this problem patient with multidirectional instability. The cycle of multidirectional instability begins with physiologic laxity, then you have capsular distraction, microtraumatic, then you have rotator cuff dysfunction, creating an increase in this instability in the shoulder, capsuloligamentous stretching of the labrum, causing perhaps a labrum tear or just interstitial stretching of the, of the capsule, rotator cuff partial tear, then you have subluxation of the humeral head that can occur inferior, anterior, posterior, and then you develop pathologic instability. On physical exam, the key test to do, and this can be done seated, supine, or even prone, the load and shift, anterior, posterior, and grade, the amount of translation of the humeral head on a scale of one to three. Usually I will start an exam with the normal or less symptomatic MDI shoulder, and the test is only positive if instability symptoms are reproduced. Another pearl is to ask the patient to do the movement of their shoulder that causes their symptoms. Which direction do they move their shoulder? This cheerleader demonstrates posterior subluxation of her humeral head bilaterally. So I asked her to do the movement that causes her symptoms. And it's horizontal adduction, internal rotation of the humerus. You might think it's going out the front from the front side, but looking at it from the back, you can see where spontaneously she can do both at the same time. She's laughing and it doesn't really bother her. So out the back, back in, out the back, back in. You can also see the symmetrical scapular dyskinesis. The muscles look normal, so there is no evidence of any neurologic involvement here, but she can do this party trick where she makes her humeral heads posteriorly sublux, then reduce them, 
posteriorly sublux, then reduce them. So ask the patient to reproduce the symptoms if they have multidirectional instability. And you can have them go more above their head. So if this person was a base in cheerleading, this would be a problem because she would drop whoever she's trying to hold up. So ask them to cause the symptoms that they have by moving their humeral head. And usually I can demonstrate by watching them better than when I'm examining them for a posterior humeral head subluxation or a multidirectional instability, more predominantly posterior direction. Imaging, x-rays are usually normal. MR arthrogram may show a patulous capsule, but usually the labrum is normal. So in these individuals, you might consider doing an intraarticular injection to better determine what the status of the capsule is. If there's an acute labrum tear, bone edema, consider surgery, but this is a very low percentage of these individuals. And the treatment for multidirectional instability is non-operative treatment, rehabilitation, rehabilitation. You must do it in a way where it doesn't cause a symptomatic subluxation that should be more non-weight bearing, using bands, uh, weighted balls, um, and not specific things such as bench press or machines. So it should be free weights and in an arc with a scapular plane that doesn't cause the humeral head to sublux. So the treatment is rehab, 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 and not operation. Having said that, I did not perform this surgery, but this individual came to me after having an anterior reconstruction from a dislocation that occurred when she was trying to raise her arm up in volleyball when she was doing PE. This is her exam of her operative side. She has multidirectional laxity, Ehlers-Danlos type appearance, and when we pull down on her humeral head, you can see she is inferiorly dislocated. This is her normal side or her non-operated side, and actually her operated side bothers her more than her non-operated side. So a definite significant sulcus sign. You can tell she never really looks up, and her humeral heads are are inferiorly subluxed, and then when she goes up in this position, she comes out the front in a backward flexed external rotated position, and even as she is sitting there, she has a sulcus sign with her humeral head inferiorly subluxated. So she has a multidirectional instability that is voluntary physiologic laxity that has now become a symptom because of her having surgery done. Her treatment was a figure of eight splint to keep her scapula in a better position, trying to get her to look up, and definitely no surgery. This individual is an 18-year-old right-hand dominant discus thrower. She threw the discus, felt a pop, pain, and was unable to move her arm. She went to the emergency room where radiographs showed a humeral head posterior dislocation on the axillary lateral view. A little unusual to still have the a humeral head out of place in a athletic movement and the direction of dislocation is still missed in emergency rooms. They lack external rotation and have the light bulb uh, with the humeral head fixed in internal rotation. And this is her axillary lateral view showing the glenoid marked with the arrows and the coracoid you can see there up on the top. So this is definitely a posterior dislocation. She was easily reduced However, on her MRI scan, she did have evidence of a posterior labrum tear and bone edema indicating an acute posterior labrum tear and surgery was done in this athlete. You can see in her exam under anesthesia, load and shift, posterior instability. Look at that range of motion, goes all the way around like a clock face. And you can do the load and shift of the proximal humerus. Uh, but I like more putting my hand on the proximal humerus, the humeral head, so I can better tell which direction. So she's coming out the back more than the front. And you can see here where the shuck test or posterior luxation more back than front comes maybe one plus out the back and three plus or three plus out the back and one plus out the front. And then she has definitely instability. And I did a posterior arthroscopic stabilization and she did well. It's also very important to assess the scapular for symmetry. Scapular dysfunction usually occurs after the glenohumeral joint has had a problem, like an MDI, then the scapula will try to follow the humeral head. And you may notice an asymmetry where typically the scapula goes away from the spine and superior. 
Remember the scapula, there can be tightness anterior, the head can be forward, sometimes they're overdeveloped pectoralis. Touch the medial borders of the scapula, have them put their elbows in the back pocket. We can certainly do rehab to work on improvement of scapular position, such as shrugs, clockwise, counterclockwise motion. If you think about the scapula as being a clock, communicate that to the patient. And if we can get the scapula in a better position, that is a good way to start in treating the multidirectional instability patient with rehab. If the shoulder is painful, oftentimes the scapula is not in a normal position. And if the scapula is out of position, that is like trying to fire, fire a cannon out of a canoe. An example, obviously this is a male weightlifter. He was doing 20 pound forward punch presses, came in with shoulder pain. Good example of why you always wanna examine the scapula. You can see where there is atrophy of the infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and he actually had a suprascapular stretch nerve involvement. He's very weak in his cuff, but it's not because of a primary rotator cuff problem. It's because of a neurologic problem of a C5 stretch from his doing repetitive weightlifting with a heavy amount of weight, single, uh, single side. And if you look here at his uh, asymmetry, he basically has muscle atrophy or a hollow in his, uh, in his scapula on the right, not on the left. He is able to do certain things like dips, but you can see the asymmetry, and that is not because of a primary rotator cuff problem. It's because he has a suprascapular stretch. Fortunately, he did improve with time, but if you didn't examine his scapula, potentially you could have done a shoulder surgery in somebody that definitely didn't need it and needs the right diagnosis. So it's very important in patients to make the right diagnosis. Another example of a scapular dyskinesis is this golfer, a right-handed golfer. I asked him to do what causes his symptoms. He had had a labrum repair by me a couple years previously. So if we ask him to swing his club, just looking at him, his scapula looks pretty symmetrical. And when we bring him back like that, you can see how his scapula wings. Again, the muscles look okay, but he has scapular dyskinesis where it is in a forward flexed protracted position and not working like the other side. So have him do external rotations, push up on the wall, and you can see that asymmetry. So one must address with specific rehab, scapular stabilization exercises, elbows in your back pocket, shrugs, and then his shoulder pain will improve. So this does not need any glenohumeral treatment, uh, whether it's injections or surgery, need to get the scapula in the right place, and then his shoulder pain will go away. So remember to examine the scapula. If the scapula is in the wrong position, it's like firing a cannon out of a canoe, and normal function of the shoulder will not occur until you stabilize the scapula or put the cannon back on dry ground. Thank you very much.